to Women Plus We've Been Waiting For, a conversation on women, wealth, power, and social change. We've been having these conversations for now the past three months to really dive into the fact that philanthropy and impact investing are not really where those industries should be. We haven't achieved the progress that we know is possible. And we are also living in a time when there is a tremendous opportunity to do things differently. And that really means exploring the role women can play alongside male allies in making that change happen. Today, we have a very special guest, Rania Anderson, welcome. It's great to see you, Alix. Great to see you too. I have to say, I personally, I'm really excited that you're here because you have played a very big role in my own personal leadership journey. And, you know, you've, you've just been a leading voice in this very important area. And I'm just very grateful that you gave us some of your time today. So I'm gonna introduce you very briefly and then we're gonna dive into our conversation since I know we only have you for 20 minutes today. Sounds great. As my grandson says, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so Rania, it, you are a global leadership expert, right? You have advised countless women and how to really achieve their goals in their journey. And you founded an organization called uh, The Way Women Work which is a terrific organization, which as I mentioned, I, I had the great luxury of, of you know, being a part of in terms of, of a client. And you also wrote two books that are just so pertinent to today's conversations and have had so many wonderful insights. You know, the first one called Undeterred, The Six Success Habits of Women in Emerging Markets. And the other one, We, Men, Women, and the decisive formula for winning at work. And so I, I wanna dive into our first question that is very much aligned with that first book, which is, you know, you have worked and met with many women in emerging markets. And I'd love for you to tell us, you know, what are three things that women in emerging markets are doing with their wealth that we can learn from, particularly in the context of philanthropy and impact investing, meaning using your money to do good things in the world. Perfect. So you know, I define wealth in many ways, right? So the financial wealth, the intellectual wealth, and what I hope to bring to the conversation today is this view of women in emerging economies different than the paradigm that most people have that women in emerging economies are poor, they are uneducated, they are the recipients of philanthropy, and to show that, yes, that is true, and that there are many highly educated, wealthy, well-networked women who are doing impact investing or changing things um, from a non-Western, non-traditional perspective. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I think that's an important distinction to make. I think sometimes uh, those of us in, who live in the West see things from, from this vantage point. So in answer to your question, what first comes to mind for me is a group of women in Latin America who years ago started something called We Exchange, where they identified women social entrepreneurs who were both running good businesses and also making an impact. And they work to advance those women and to help them get funding and to grow and, and, and be successful. Well, today, that same group of women, I'm gonna call out two women, Susana Garcia Robles and Marta Cruz, have started a women's network of angel investors, VCs, women angel investors, women VCs, women impact investors. It's 150 women in Latin America who are members of this organization called We Invest, and they are collaborating together around the investing that they do. Yeah. So just there, you see the power of, you know, how they're looking at this from all these different levels and how they're coming together. 
Second example I'm gonna share is completely different, but I think just as powerful and valuable. It's a woman in India who came through what's called the Cartier Women's Entrepreneurial Program, and that has made a huge impact in emerging markets. But um, Tripti Jan created a product that harnesses how um, rain is captured during monsoons and it can get dispersed into farmland, right? Mm -hmm. um, and make a huge difference in crop production. It's a very simple product. It's a very cheap product. But then she went beyond that and she's trained all these women to be advisors in terms of farming right to these small farmers and wow. so it's like this hybrid model right Alix you know you are working in in your space with you know trillions millions billions of dollars and this philanthropy in this case might be small but the impact that it is making is so significant and it's actually not that small but in, in relative terms. So I, I, I think we, we can see those models in two different ways. And then I'll pick on or highlight one last area and that's in the Middle East, which is where I'm from and how um, Queen Rania, the Queen of Jordan really worked on changing education, how education is done in the country of Jordan and working with you know, in very different ways, both in terms of her own wealth, in terms of sovereign wealth, in terms of individual wealth, and really, you know, as you talk about impact investing, what are the metrics we're trying to move? And so those are, I think, are three good examples. Those are great examples. And my, you know, my big question is, where are those stories, right? It's like those stories are not... Let me check back. They're making their way through, you know, different conferences and conversations and panels. But in terms of mainstream media, or you know, what is shaping the conversation on how people are thinking about women from emerging markets, those stories are not the first things that come to mind. It's exactly what you shared at the beginning. When we hear stories of women from emerging markets, it's often a story that is associated you know, with poverty and challenges. We're not hearing you know, these great and encouraging models. So you know, I would ask you, Rania, like, so how do we change this narrative? How do we get it out there? Well, you're doing that with, with <laughs> the work that you do and, and, and with this amazing podcast. I, I think it's also incumbent on us as women, as professionals, both men and women, to when someone's talking about, you know, poor women in India, to know stories about women in India who are leaders and who are like Tripti and doing all this work. And, right, we have to remember those stories and to bring them in and to make the narrative broader. And I would say the same thing about women in the West, right? We, when I set out to write Undeterred, I purposefully, and, and this touches on what you said, I am so tired of talking about the challenges and the obstacles. I am a student of success and I like to find who is doing it and how are they doing it and how do we do more of it, what they are doing. And I'll, I'm not disputing the fact that there are challenges and obstacles, but I'll leave that for somebody else to talk about. And I just want to say, how do we replicate and expand on what's going well? Yeah. And if we all do more of that, hopefully those stories come to light. I love that, Rania, and I know we're going to pivot to another, you know, question that is linked to this other great book that you wrote, but I just want to add that everything you just said right there is what is so challenging in the world of philanthropy, 
you know, you see these exciting stories of success go from pilot to, you know, an exciting next phase of growth. And when it's time to scale those ideas with billions of dollars behind them, the same way you would grow a concept, you know, in the private sector, there is no one to meet you there. I mean, a very, very small audience. You know, it's that the comments are either this doesn't fit in our, you know, pilot initiative or, you know, now it's it's too scaled. So we're only really focusing on this area over here. Everything is so bifurcated. And so you're right. We're, we miss this opportunity of saying, listen, we've been talking about obstacles and challenges for so long. But there are women from emerging markets who are doing great things that are working, generating great financial and social returns. Why are we not scaling and replicating this and telling the story around it? And I, I really hope that, you know, through this discussion and many more that we could really help guide, you know, that, that kind of direction. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add to that for a moment because, you know, Part of what I admire so much, Elise, about what you do is kind of push on the things that people don't push on and talk about the things people don't talk about. And so to that point, so absolutely that is what's happening. And I also see sometimes that not just in emerging markets, but everywhere that each person is thinking about or each organization is thinking about their little part of something that's big mm -hmm. and that allows that thinking around you haven't scaled enough you're not big enough you, this is not a big enough market and so what I see as an opportunity for us for women to really okay how do we change this is more collaboration mm -hmm. right so if I come at something from this perspective then rather than seeing you, this other organization as my competitor in getting funds, let me find a way to work with you and tackle this, this you know, issue that whether it's water or poverty, you know, hunger or education together. And then let's go together to these funders and present like a big, bold vision instead of, I'm going to do my thing and you're after my, you know, my dollars from whatever, you know, investors and, it's, and, and, and that's the male model and the female model is not let's collaborate. Exactly. I, you know, this, uh, I love that so much, Rania. And it's, it's something that came up um, in a lot of big philanthropy conversations we were having today with different organizations. And what we were saying is we just, we've got to shift away from this culture that is focused on one person is going to save this. That's yeah, not yeah. going to happen. There are different channels, whether it's government, private sector, local organizations, international organizations that are going to have to come together to make that kind of change happen. Let's present that holistically to big philanthropy donors who will believe in that bigger vision. And then there's enough for everybody to work with and bring their unique element. And if anything, the big philanthropy donors are more likely to buy in and believe in that vision because they are seeing that ecosystem exactly. versus betting on one person. And, you know, we had April Rennie on the show a few weeks ago. Oh. She, she made that point about the difference between a patriarchal society and a matriarchal society. And it's a perfect pivot into this, this other question that we had for you, which is that, you know, as we are highlighting everything that, you know, really was exposed by like a hundredfold, a thousandfold last year, as we went through, you know, and are still going through this pandemic, a lot of data and information went back to the surface in terms of the, the great inequality that women are enduring across pretty much everything. Where, whether it's lack of leadership in key industries or it's the lack of balance in the home and how that impacts women's ability to be all that they can be in their careers. I mean, across the spectrum, as you know, Rania, there's a lot of inequalities. So I think it's safe to say that 
you know, women are just, they've had enough, right? We have had enough. And we want to go out there. We don't want to sugarcoat things. We want to have a candid conversation. But we don't want to alienate the men who have also championed us and been on our, by our sides. I think that, you know, the secure men who hear these statistics are not going to get defensive. On the contrary, they'll say, yeah, this is not right and we should fix it. But we would love your insights on how do we really orchestrate is probably not the right word, but unleash this change in the best way possible where we don't alienate those male allies and truly create that inclusive environment that we dream of without neglecting the fact that women have gotten the short end of the stick for too long. Totally. So we have to make the conversation not about men versus women, but about both of us, right? That's the the title of my second book, We. And to do that, and, and this may seem, you know, some people are going to take issue with this, but it's how I think about it and what has I've seen work. I think we've got to figure out what is in it for men mm -hmm. to make these changes, right? So we're always talking about what's in it for women, what's in it for society. And many people will understand that and make that change, right? But essentially we are asking the people in power to give up some of their power. And most people don't wanna do that. Mm -hmm right? Give up some of your wealth and some of your power. So what is it that you, we've made the business case, we've made the societal case, but what is it that you gain? And I'll, I'm going to give a, an example because that's what I, I, I think makes sense. So in today's environment, if you are not an inclusive leader, and you don't build a diverse team, right? You, you're just not gonna make it, right? Your team is gonna be underperforming. Your company is not going to promote you. You're not going to be able to hire good talent. And we've got to talk to men about the personal gain that you get mm -hmm. from changing the way you lead and function and work both professionally in the home. So that's one. Two, I think we have to wrap our arms around the men who are being allies, both privately and publicly, and continue to support them and help them do more. Mm -hmm. As we showcase those people and others see them as being successful, they will want to emulate them. And then mostly what I do is I just kind of turn my back on the people who are not coming along the journey right now. I don't have time for that. And I am not in the convincing business. So I go where the flow is and I try to accelerate that flow and I make it better. And I'm going to, and then I just like, okay, you people over here don't get it. You're not doing it. I'm not talking to you. I'm not interacting with you. I'm not doing business with you. Maybe that's a bad strategy, but I don't have enough energy. And I'm, I'm going to go back to a point I just made and, and then turn it back over to you. Some men are trying mm -hmm. and they get shut down. I was in a meeting yesterday and um, one of the male leaders was trying to make a very valid point and he didn't choose the best words and he was um you know attacked by a couple of women in the in the group oh yeah when he is an ally he is working he's in the meeting specifically working on that and so then i said you know i'm not going to speak for this person but were you trying to say this? And he said, yes. Ugh. 
And so, you know, I looked at, it's like, let's try to see, like, let's meet that person halfway. We're asking men to meet us halfway and let's also meet them halfway. And That's some true. women will say we've met them 99% of the way. So they just need to come our way. And I get that too. <laughs> well, no, but, but it's, but it's very valuable. I mean, I think it's, you're, you're absolutely right because what is our ultimate goal here? Our goal is to create a balanced, inclusive society. And I don't think we should be saying it's just women and like men are out forever. I, ideally it's, it's a balance, right? So I think so much that you shared today was really, really just so valuable, Rania. We've got 10 seconds, which is not nearly enough time, but if there were two things two actionable things you'd want to share with our audience today in terms of just a step they could take forward to either, you know, be a better male ally um, or help create that more inclusive environment or an actionable step in terms of the earlier piece of the conversation around how we can create a new narrative for women from emerging markets. What would be two steps you'd give to our audience? So to men, I would say, use your platform and your power to advocate on behalf of parity and equity. Don't just be like this quiet supporter, be a vocal supporter um, and use your money and your influence to, to actually advocate for something to happen. For the earlier conversation, I would say to have the kind of impact leaks that you are wanting the whole industry to, to change to, right? I think it's a, a matter of finding more collaborations between the work that brilliant people are doing and to not be um, territorial or intimidated, or I'm not coming up with the right word, you know, to feel like someone's gonna get, you know, to understand that there, there is enough money. Mm -hmm. It's not the lack of money that's the issue, right? It's how do we, can we present the case in a different way to be more aligned? Rania. So great. I really thank you for sharing these uh, really terrific insights with our audience today. I am envisioning a part two, a section, you know, a, a type of podcast where maybe we're having a glass of wine. So as we're having this conversation, but thank you so much for coming on today and stay tuned. We'll be sharing more soon. Thanks, Alix. And I really appreciate um, what you're you know, got your finger on and, and trying to make happen. Um, I think it's bold and really needed in, in um, all of our daily lives. Thanks. <laughs>